Tim. Mr. Tappy. I got What's here uh, as soon as I could after work. Thanks for uh, putting this uh, together. I understand we have some uh, estate cigars. This is it right here. I would have brought a different cigar. This one of the only ones I had left at work. Uh, but this is uh, it's a Chilla Moose uh, Corona, kind of a beefy Corona. Seth Alec Bradley Tempest. Mm. All right, to, to bring everybody up to speed, what we've got uh, is I was working with a guy on some projects and he had mentioned that a, a good friend of his had died uh, a few months back and left his collection of cigars to, uh, uh, to my friend. And the guy who died, his name is uh, Mike. His buddy said he left some really good cigars, but since I really don't smoke them, I, I just wanna part with them. So he said, make a fair offer. And he sent us a couple fuzzy videos of it. It looked like there were a couple good cigars there, or several good cigars there. So we took a shot, uh, kind of sight unseen, and each went in 300 and bought this uh, for 600. And it includes the humidor, uh, which he's had plugged in, but I don't know if he's had it charged. So one of the questions we have about these cigars is first, what's the quality of the, uh, the brands? And second, what kind of shape is this? are these cigars in? I think we want to raise a glass to Mike uh, and thanks for this bounty that I, I'm hoping we're gonna enjoy soon but either way uh, either way uh, we sure appreciate and we're gonna make good use of the collection yes Mike that's the best we can do we'll make good use all right so what we're gonna do here I've got uh, I put some tape in this is our fancy system for judging and we're going to have super premiums premiums above average, daily smokes, and question mark. And question mark either means that eh, it's a questionable smoke or we just don't know anything about the cigar. And uh, we'll try to figure out, uh, did we get a decent deal? Yeah, I just bought it based on that video. And a little part of it was a little bit harrowing. Your friend was fumbling the cigars, dropping from a distance. Uh, <laughs> some you know hot what appear to be a uh, high quality cigar so it was good that you got him out of his hands into gentler hands as quickly <laughs> as you could i think we gotta start one of the small boxes i got these today and i have not looked at these so i really don't know much about them okay yeah. well should we uh dig right in there we could oh, oh wow now this Okay, what we have here is we have a Boveda, which uh, bodes well, and it's not all crispy. What What is a Boveda? A humidification device, and there's one inside, inside this Tupperware. This Boveda is uh, flexible. These cigars might be in good shape. Let's see. Except for this one. Oh. Yeah, we're missing a bit of wrap around that. So what, what is this? Can you tell? Uh, La, La Flor Dominicana and, and La Avocado. Does it look like there's some decent cigars in there? The brands are good. The conditions are a little different. I noticed we have a cigar mold on uh, on this beautiful a Ashton. What does that mean? We have to throw it away? No. No? Uh, no. This is state sun grown. As, as you can see, there's a... A nice bloom of um, should we mold. Cut, should we cut that off? Yeah, yeah. Whoever uh, gets a cigar can uh, you All know right. cut it off or whatever. But um, yeah, that indicates yeah. that they're over humidified uh, at some point. At some point. All right. Well, starting with the Ashton, then uh, what do you think? With the bloom on it, it's it would be at least it would be a higher end, but we have to put that in the okay. middle. Okay, we've switched places here so that Todd could show me the cigar at the same time he's showing the camera. And uh, you were about to show that Padron? Yeah, this is a, this is a, a standard uh, Padron Classic. It's, uh, it's got a little hole in the top, but what's uh, interesting is um, it's got some damage on the bottom, which is a little confusing. But if you'll notice, it almost looks like it was cut. Yeah. Sure. 
I'm guessing it'll smoke. So uh, that was the, that would be medium, but with a uh, slight damage, we'll put it in the average. What else do we got here? Here's a San Crystal ball, a larger one. Is that, is that a good cigar? It is a good cigar. As I scratch here, what I discovered is it was mold, but it had been hardened, and it's not over moist now as you can see the band slips mm -hmm. so this cigar you can tell just by looking at these things that it was over humidified and then brought back down it's if anything it's uh, under right now all right so what do you think so this is a good cigar but when you um when you have that slight damage and not sure the humidification we're in a daily I, smoke i want to call it daily smoker but value wise how about that davidoff there i know that's a good smoke and it is this is uh davidoff tampa florida sun grown and it appears to be in good condition that strictly goes here and that's that's a super premium it's going to be a 20 dollar stick what do you want to do with these ones that have no bands on them i think probably what we had to do is uh give them an evaluation and smoke them tonight all right they're a little on the wet side these could technically be Cubans, but since we don't know, we'll put them in the unknown area. And here's another one that could be the same company. Now, a lot of people, they get their Cubans and take the bands off with a crack at the end. These uh, Caldwell, Eastern Standard, these are pigtails. I love these cigars. It's one of my uh, favorite, $12. And what do we have next? Ah, I like Bradley. Yeah, this is almost what we're smoking now. One of my favorite brands. The slightest of mold. Eh, eh maybe here <laughs> in the middle. Yeah, that's going to be a $10. Oliva G. I think this is a, the Cameron uh, variety. Ah. I'm not going to keep repeating, but there's Over, consistency uh, of moving and the high humidification. All right, and you're putting that in the, uh, the daily smokes. Mm hmm. Okay, these are above average. Yeah. Oh, now here, this is interesting. This is actually, I can tell, is the same as this cigar. And he carefully wrapped these in this aged cedar. This leads me to believe that these may very well be high quality cigars. All right, and you're putting that in the uh, unknown area. But they very well could be all the way here. Here's a room 101. Limited 17. Looks like it's in good shape. We'll put this in the 12. Okay, and that's the premium. Yeah. Part de Gas. These are good. Also good shape. We'll put this in the... Really? You would rate the Part de Gas that low? I'm not... It's a daily smoke. I'm not really rating it low, but I'm not putting it on par with the Ashton. 5, five 8, 10. 12, and 20. Here's an Ashton uh, cabinet compared to the Florida Sun Grown. But uh -huh. contrary to having mold on it, this appears to be in very good condition. So this goes right here. Uh, Eastern Standard Sun Grown. We have another one of those. Magic Toast, also in good shape. Here's another uh, San Cristobal. Uh -huh. And this is a smaller cigar compared to the other one, but it's in really good shape. No now, I'm gonna pull out a couple that I don't know. Dominicanos. Do you know anything about that? It looks like an off-brand cigar. Okay. Um, if you just look at it, the way it's wrapped, it's a very simple construction. The band is it's off, not, it's not matched up. Yeah. yeah, this is gonna be your daily smoker. The HR uh, says from Esteli, Nicaragua. I'm gonna set this here because I, I don't know that cigar. We have five more unlabeled. You really have to be a gambling man to um, categorize those w without smoking them first. Because they very well could be Cubans. Here's another uh, Eastern like, Standard Sun Grown. He likes Eastern Standard. They're very good. A Vince Nine Ball with, good lord, a foot band and a pigtail on the foot. May I? and a, a box press with kind of rounded edges. Beautiful cigar. You're lighting the pigtail in. 
That's a so it's a it's a closed foot. Okay. I, what do you think? I'm guessing that has to. Not knowing what it is, it has to either go in this middle, somewhere around there. We're gonna put it above average. Yes. The tabernacle, we know what this costs. Twelve dollars. <laughs> so we can put them in uh, twelve dollar. Here's another one of these uh, closed foot pigtail, except except the pigtail broke off. Oh. And we have a loose wrapper here. Oh no. Is this the same company? Yeah. Oh, it's Vince Nineball. Where would you put this? Uh, it's got to go lower. It's going to go a daily smoker. We have uh, two tatuajes. Tatuajes? Yeah. These are also uh, some of my favorite cigars. These are in good shape. The small one we'll put here. here. I would almost put both of them in the higher end because I love them so much, but objectively. Here's another Magic Toast. That goes in the middle. That goes in the above we have, average. We have three of those now. Yes. Perez Carrillo, La Astoria. That one uh, cigar of the year. I'm going to put it with uh, Alec Bradley. Above average? All yeah, right. above average on the cigar that won cigar of the year. So, <laughs> You're hard. Cut me some slack. <laughs> Here's uh, Rocky Patel Edge. Put that down here. T52 Liga Privada. Uh, that we're going to put in the higher level here. Mm. No, it doesn't match uh, David off. Oh, man, you can't do that to me. Flor del Valle, H.O. Mano from Warp Cigar Company. We're gonna put that in this higher level here. We have a uh, Monte Cristo uh, Platinum. Oh, appears to be in good shape. Julius Caesar Diamond Crown. That one we'll put up with that. Really? Right yeah. And then we have an interesting little bonus. This is a uh, Zycar Scissors. So what do you think that's worth? Let's put it at 10. All right, let's get another box. Okay. All right. Oh, good Lord. It's a little bit different. Travel Humidor 1, Travel Humidor 2, an unused Boveda. And then we have a cigar cutter. Oh, this is pretty fancy. Yeah. So you can get several types of cuts. Yeah. I like that. Now this is interesting. This is a Zycar. It looks got a hidden mechanism for opening. Oh, here you go. Look at that. You just pull on it. I've never seen that model, but it looks uh, very excellent. Now inside this, empty. Is that yeah, a five-ish? Yeah also empty we are missing the clips on this what can you tell me about this contraption it's steamed up a little bit it there looks like a refrigerator um it's a it, it, the light works i plugged it in um i i think what we should do is take the drawers out and do it one by one all right oh i think we're getting into the good ones here oh well, i see but these are the ones that were in in the fancy humidor these are all in good shape. These are well cared for. Tell me. Oh, good Lord. There's a Neanderthal in here. That's a Neanderthal? That's a Neanderthal. We've been talking about Neanderthals getting one. And the reason we haven't? They're very expensive. Uh, while we were off camera, I went ahead and put the first group of cigars, which was in the Tupperware, outside the boxes so that we could put what appear to be the super premium collection from the humidor in the boxes except for those two nice ones over there. Whereas uh, the original batch was on the moist side, these are on the dry side. Okay. But they're not cracked. They're right in the ballpark. We have some beautiful Perdomos. We have a vintage 12, 20 anniversary, another vintage 12, and a Habano Maduro. Yeah, we gotta put those. We'll put them in the middle. They're not as expensive. I mean, we can split them up. The bigger 20th anniversary could probably be pushed higher. Oh, uh, here's a premium. Padron Damaso, and it's in good shape. And this one doesn't even feel dry. That goes uh, over here. Super premium. Yeah, that's Let right. me see that bad boy. Nice. Very nice uh, cigar. 
This has a special wrapper. I don't know this brand. The Oscar Vallardes. If anybody out there knows anything about the cigar, you do let us know. We'll put it in the middle. Oh, we have another uh, Room 101. We have another Partagas. Another Perdomo. H. Upman 175th anniversary. I can guarantee it's a good cigar, so we're gonna put it in this category. Okay, here we have some La Roma de Cubas of different varieties. Edición Especial and then the Classic. They're all very good. We've smoked uh, quite a few of those are very good. They're less expensive, but very, very good. Here's a Upman, uh, compared to this other Upman we looked at. This is the Banker. Mm -hmm. It's a less expensive cigar, but very tasty. Monte Cristo Artisan Series. You put that in the premium. Yeah. A Macanudo Vintage 2000. That's in really good shape. Yep. And then um, a Gran Reserva. A little on the dry side, but also in good shape. And it looks like it's uh, been aged for a while. Vintage 2000 is very good. Um, now I'm going to put it up in the higher end. And I'll smoke this Fuente... Uh, H. Up in Nicaragua. It's on the daily smokes. When we say daily smokes, I want to be clear for our viewers that uh, I say that tongue in cheek because my daily smoke is actually this. So, <laughs> and here's another one, uh, CAO Flathead. Also smokes. Oh, yeah. There's two cigars that I don't know, but I suspect are good. Young Hootent Gothic Serpent. 25th. Yeah, if anybody knows anything about this particular cigar, do let us know. We're gonna put this in with uh, an above average? Yes. And with this uh, Don Julio, we're gonna put this with the La Roma de Cuba. And then we have a, another uh, Praise Creo La Familia. We put this in the above average. Yep. Yeah. And then we have this uh, Cohiba Nicaragua. This falls in the I think the category of daily smoke. All right, that that tray's done. Let's be careful of handling them. I, yeah, I'm still having anxiety from uh, the video. Oh. oh, ouch! All right, you can have those. No. <laughs> yeah, be very, very I careful. Know. Let's start with the ones I dropped. Let's see what we dropped. Oh, good lord! These are the Tatuai Reservas. The ones you dropped are the Tatawai Reservas, which oh, no. I'm cringing. This is one of my very, very favorite cigars. <laughs> it looks like they were not cracked. Okay. They're a little bit older. You can tell by the labeling. These I have high hopes for, but we'll put them with the other one in the higher level. We have some more La Roma de Cubas, two Mia Mors. Uh, three, three Mia Mors. It's a little bit different sizes. These will go with the other La Romas. There's three of them. Tatuajes. These also go in the higher category. Four more Cohibas. There's a Nicaragua and three Red Dots. Yeah, these are probably very good. This is a Monte Cristo Espada. I would smoke it with these uh, La Roma de Cuba. Tatuaje. This is uh, this is an interesting cigar. It's uh, it's called Skinny Monsters. <laughs> uh, several years back, I bought the sampler pack of all the Skinny Monsters. Every single one of them was good, distinct. Yeah, I'm leaning. I almost put it here, but it's just not as expensive a cigar. Hoyo de Monterey mm. Epicure Number no. One. That's a smaller cigar. We're gonna put that in with the uh, Cohibas. All right. El Centurion with a C. This is from uh, My Father Cigars. They're pretty premium cigars. But then under the My Father, he's got Centurion, an Opulence, La Promesa. Here's another Opulence, La Promesa. Well, this is uh, the Connecticut edition, a, a little bit larger cigar. My, my Father. Father. La Gran Operata. The judge. the judge. Judge. I would put every one of these in this higher level. Wow. The My Father cigars, they 
They go up in the higher level here. Yeah. So how many are you putting in there? Eight. Should we smoke one? Let's save the good ones for later, where there are some damaged ones we can uh, mm. dispense with. I would actually smoke the La Flor, the one that's really damaged. All right, let me see if I can find another damaged one here. There was a crack. Oh, this one. one. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're gonna right. go with it. This, this has got to be the front proper one. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Here's a Cro-Magnet. Cro-Magnet? We have a Neanderthal and a Cro-Magnet. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, that goes in the yeah. super or the premium. Yeah. Mia Moore. Uh, Mia Moore Reserva. Uh, Torpedo Diciona Special. With uh, some damage at the bottom. But something happened to that one. So we're gonna downgrade it. These other two we put right in here with with the rest of La Roma de Cubas. There's another Cro Magnet, smaller size. It's a smaller size, but I'm still put that in the super premium. It's a standard my father, my father. Uh, Bellicoso number two. Daily smoke? No. You're going premium. Yes. Nice. Yes, sir. Uh, for daily, and uh, what we're calling daily right now, here's another Oliva G. Panatella Tatuaje. We're going to put it next to the skinny. We have another uh, Padron. This is a Torpedo, which is in better shape than the other one. So, uh, Padron. Anniversary series, uh, 1964. That goes mm. all the way to the top. A Carrillo, it's called uh, Elite Selection Oscuro. Just the feel of it and the brand, that's going to be a very good cigar. So that's going to go, yeah, it's, it's going go. with the Perdomos. Here's another Carrillo. This is... Uh, La Astoria. Now, this is a bigger La Astoria. I think we're going to bump this up. Another Cohiba, Nicaragua. And an Oliva G, which we put over here. We have another Neanderthal. Here's another Cohiba, Nicaragua, but this one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to bump this up up with these uh, Perdomos. We have two more Tatuajes in with the Perdomos. This is a shaggy foot. They call it uh, Hibaro. So we're gonna put this over here. And then we have an Illusione, which I think is our first Illusione in F9. Also in the premiums. We have 10 Caldwell cigars here. The King is dead. So with the King is dead, we have two that are dead and three that are in good shape. So the ones that are in good shape, we definitely put in the premium side. One, two, three. These two, let me take a closer look. This one, it was definitely dropped. And it looks like it bounced off both sides, hit hard here and then bounced here. <laughs> you know, being a Sherlock Holmes. It's a very good cigar, but we're gonna drop it down. This one, eee, definitely damaged. Hmm. Long live the king. Since they're both higher quality, I'm gonna put them in the higher level. Three blind man's bluffs. Also Caldwell cigars. And that does it for this one. All right. Is that it? No. no. Wait, there's more. For sure. Well, let's take a look at what's in here. More cigars. Ooh. Let's see what we have. Rocky Patel 1990. Yeah, we're going to put it in a lower level, just because it's not expensive. A very good smoker. Timeless. Limited edition. 2019. Let's see how many of these we have. Um, we might have four of these. How, the, how many? Four. The guys that made these are the ones that sold Nat Sherman. So these mm. could be very similar to some of the Nat Sherman blends. And we have another Timeless. It goes with these other ones in the, in the premiums. Rocky Patel Decade, one of my all-time favorites. This goes in a daily smoke. Right. Casa Magna, so I'm going to put that in the lower. We have another Oliva G, but since it's damaged, we'll put it here. Tatuaje Skinny, but notice it's longer. And that goes right over here. And more Davidoff. A Nicaragua Box Press Robusto. The Super Premium. The Super Premium. 
and uh, Diamond Crown Maximus. I'm gonna put it down here. Found another uh, Timeless limited edition. Oliva V. This this cigar looks so appetizing. Nicaragua Tempest, Alec Bradley, also very good. We put this in with the uh, La Roma de Cubas. Another uh, Carrillo La Astoria. That's a Florida Sun Grown. I believe that's a Drew Estate. Vince Nine Balls. Remember the one with the pigtail? I'm going to put this in the higher level. Oh, this. This is a Sobre Mesa, which I have also haven't pulled the trigger on yet. Silver Mesa? Sobre. Like so under great. under the table. <laughs> Steve Saka, he's a guy that was at Drew Estate and went on his own and made this uh, Sober Mesa brand. This is also a tweener for me, but it, it really goes here. We have another Caldwell. This is the Midnight, Midnight Express. Also an excellent cigar, we'll put it with the rest of them. I found another Timeless, that goes over here. Rocky Patel Hercules, limited edition. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere in this category. I might be lowballing that one. Partagas, uh, it's got the black label. Look at that wrapper, what is that? Well, it's a dark wrapper, it's an Oscuro um, fermented wrapper. It's definitely worth a try, it might be an excellent cigar. Here's an old favorite of mine, the Trinidad. All my Trinidads have smoked well. I would put this side by side with the Sun Grown. We have another Tatuaje. Put it with a smaller Tatuaje. Oh, this is a My Father. Flora de Antillas. So this goes with the My Fathers. The Cohiba Red Dot. I'm gonna put it right there. Another Caldwell. The Damn. King is Dead. Next are some ones we haven't had yet. These are Avos. This is a higher end cigar. Ah, the 20, 20 Hands. I've heard of this and I haven't smoked it. I think this is a very good cigar. It's called South, the Avo South. I think it might have been dropped and part of it fell out. This is, this is a high-end cigar. It's got to stay there along with its other Avo friend. And then we have an interesting cigar, a smaller cigar. A Perfecto, almost like those uh, La Aurora Perfectos we smoke sometimes. And the brand on this is uh, Zeno. Even though it's a smaller cigar, I'm going to put it in the premium. In the fancy. There are only a few cigars here, but I am far from disappointed. There's five cigars. A large Vitola Carrillo La Astoria. We have the Carrillos here, but this larger Vitola goes up to this higher level. Oh my goodness. A Tatuaje 10 Anniversary. I think he may have kept some of his very special cigars in this little tiny one. Standard Tatuai in great shape. This also goes here. Ashton uh, Virgin Sun Grown BSG. We will put it right here. Now this last one is um, it's called uh, Placencia Alma del Campo. This is one of my favorite cigar people. He's just a, a virtuoso and he's made some of my favorite cigars throughout the years. And this is one of the ones he made and put his own name on. We'll put it over here. It could almost go to the top. That takes care of this. We have to evaluate the uh, humidor also. It's got some condensation inside the glass. Well, if you want to put a price on it for now, you okay. can just say $30. Just a spitball number. All right, let's add it up. So we've got uh, 20 times 5. $1,505. The cigars themselves, without the accessories, came to 1420 according to our very crude calculations. It's a cr it's crude. It's crude. Yes, yes. But it's uh, worth about 900 more than we paid for it, so I'd say, uh, yeah, we did all right. We've uh, completed another Cigar Ops mission. A very special mission. We had no clue that this windfall was going to come our way. Yes. And I do want to thank my friend who provided it. And I want to raise another toast to Mike and thank him for his good taste. Yes. And yeah, wherever you are, here's to you.
Thank you.